Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, boy. We have made history. Now what? Anyway, I'm glad to see the people that are here. Tammy, Matthew. Matthew's hurting tonight, but I'm glad you're doing all right. Ryan Talbert, haven't seen you in a while, brother. I hope everything's doing well. I think I missed a couple of people that might have joined, but if not, that's okay, too. If you guys could, share this out there with whatever groups, your timelines, whatever, just to get the word out there because, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to... Um, make sense of everything for those of you keeping track of other things i think we are now um what seven days no yeah seven days just about eight days eight days away from uh our sixth child welcome joe welcome ron yeah um eight days away the 27th we'll be welcoming little monique into the world <clears throat> they can impeach my ball sack joe says yeah, they probably will figure out a way to do that. <laughs> What's up, David? How you doing, man? Um, they, they probably will figure out a way to impeach your ball sack, Joe. Just give them some time. Um, I have a bunch of things that I want to get to today, tonight, whatever. But like I said, if you guys would, please share this out on your timelines, any groups that you may have that are political in nature. And I don't care if they're liberal or conservative or anything like that. What's up, Ron? How you doing? Uh, I don't care about any of that. Uh, you can share them out to liberals. Uh, conservative doesn't really matter. Thank you, Joe. Um, Brian says, doing well, just staying fascist book jail. Yeah, I hear that. What's up, Holly? What's up, Felicia? And and honestly, I want to thank everybody that's here that has sent us anything, whether it be diapers or furniture or uh, clothing, especially clothing. My God, we have so many clothes for this young girl. It's just amazing. Thank you so much for sending all of that stuff. I do appreciate it. We appreciate it. Christina's uh, taking a nap right now. You know, that, that's kind of common eight days out. But anyway, I know you guys didn't come here to listen to me talk about the newborn or the soon to be newborn, the unborn. I don't know the, the expectant. <laughs> What's up, Deb? Um, let's talk about impeachment. All right. Listen, I woke up this morning and I heard everything. I mean, everything across the spectrum. Um, Mike Pence is president. Uh, Hillary Clinton is president. Uh, they, they're going to lead Donald Trump out in cuffs. Um, let's see what else I heard that he wasn't impeached. Um, you know, uh, he's not impeached until they send the articles up to the Senate, all of which are categorically wrong. Okay. He is impeached. He will go down as uh, the 45th president of the United States. And he was impeached in his first term period. There is nothing we can do about that. The articles were uh, um, brought forth to the house. They were voted on. They were accepted. He is impeached. Now, I think what a lot of people are failing to understand is what impeachment actually means. All, all the house of representatives basically is, is like a grand jury. Okay. They indicted him. That's what it basically boils down to. They indicted him. Now, in order to try him, okay, to get him removed from office, he would have to go or they would have to uh, go to the Senate. Then the Senate would have a trial in which the Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice would preside over that hearing. OK, that's how this all works. Um, yeah, you're right, Brian. They, they do. He, Brian says the majority of this nation needs a civics book for Christmas. No shit. Uh, I'm actually going to give you a, a bit of a, a quote from uh, Neil Gorsuch, who, for those of you who don't know, is uh, Donald Trump's first pick to go on the Supreme Court. Um, that's true. Matthew Peavy, very, very true. He is, and, and I can say this, I'm predicting it now. I'm sure other people are predicting it as well, but I'm telling you right now, here now, he will go down in the fir as, as the first president in history to be impeached and then reelected because he's going to be reelected. The Democrats pretty much put the nail in their own coffin by doing this. He's also the first president to ever be impeached without actually have committing a crime. And don't take my word for that. That's not a Republican spin. That's not a conservative spin. Look at the articles of impeachment. There are no crimes there. There's absolutely no crimes there. Um, you'll see that. Obstruction of Congress. He's a separate and equal power uh, that that's a branch of government. OK, so you have the executive branch, the legislative branch. For those of you who may not understand civics, the executive branch is the president of the United States and the Department of Justice. He controls all of it. OK, including the Department of Defense, Department of Justice. That's all privy to the executive branch. 
The legislative branch is re responsible for writing laws, which is the House of Representatives and the United States Senate. And then you have the judiciary, which is the Supreme Court. Okay? That's the three branches of government. Now, the unheard of uh, branch of government, which is the most powerful branch of government that isn't listed, is we the people. But I digress a little bit. The most powerful branch of government right now actually is the IRS, and it's not even supposed to be a branch of government. It's illegal. But again, I digress. Anyway, the three that I mentioned, the executive, the legislative, and the judiciary are all separate but equal branches of government. Okay? Meaning that one can request anything they want from the other one, but the other one doesn't have to abide. Okay, they don't have to abide. So in other words, the legislative, the House of Representatives can ask whatever they want of the President of the United States, and the President of the United States can then turn around and say, fuck you. And he can do that repeatedly. And then if the House has a problem with that, they then take their case to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court would weigh in on their, uh, on, you know, who's right and who's wrong. Okay, so in this case, the House of Representatives skipped the process of going to the Supreme Court, and they literally started drafting articles of impeachment just to, you know, just because of the fact that he wouldn't comply with what Congress wanted. That's not an impeachable offense. Now, now, don't get me wrong. The House can impeach on whatever they want. They really can. And James Madison actually was very, very fearful of the fact that they would do exactly what they just did. All right. But the House can impeach without a crime. It's just never been done before. So that's why it's historic. It's never been done before. There's always been a crime. You look at Clinton. He lied to Congress. That's a felony. He perjured himself. That's a felony. Okay. Um, there was uh, Nixon was bribery and, and extortion, if I'm not mistaken. That's a felony. Okay. So, so you know, these, these are things that were actual crimes. Donald Trump hasn't actually committed a crime, at least provable by any measure of the law. Uh, Robert Mullen says uh, the Democrats are pissed because he can't, he can't be bought and won't play their games. I mean, yeah, I think they're just pissed off because they don't like the guy and they hated the fact that their queen didn't get inaugurated or, you know, crowned. Um, Matthew says, uh, House just assured his second term will be the lame, will, will be a lame duck with a right-leaning House, right-leaning Senate, and right-leaning Supreme Court. Imagine what can be done. Well, and, and, and I agree with you, Matthew, but see, this is where I, look, I caution the Republicans, right? Because we did have, in his first two years, uh, we did have uh, a, a majority in the House, a slim majority in the Senate, and obviously the presidency, as far as Republicans go. The House did their job. They passed plenty of good bills. The Senate, they didn't do shit. I mean, 50 state concealed carry. Uh, recipro reciprocity between all 50 states for carry that was passed by the house and it sat on the Senate floor for a year. Okay. Donald Trump didn't push it. Mitch McConnell didn't push it. Ted Cruz didn't push it. Nobody pushed it. It never got put up on, on, on for a vote. So it just died when the new Congress came in. Um, that was just one, you know, I mean, that was just one thing. The bump stock ban that should have never been, uh, uh, backed up by the Republicans, but it was, uh, you know, so, I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that, that I'm, there's a lot of things that I'm cautious about having a full right wing government as well, because they haven't done anything in the first two. I mean, they did get well, they didn't repeal Obamacare. And yes, I know it was McCain, but they didn't repeal it. So, you know, that was a slim majority in the Senate. The Senate is I'm hoping that we pick up more seats in the Senate. Joe says all they're doing is trying to damage um, uh, him in uh, pretense to the election. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. One second. I'm getting a message here. What is this? Excuse me one second. I'm trying to read this. All right, I'm going to have to get to that in a second. Sorry, I just had somebody messaging me while I'm live. Um, yeah, they're, they're actually, they're, they're, that's exactly what they're trying to do is, is sit there and uh, discredit him. Uh, before the election, that's all they're trying to do. And now it's it's you know for anybody that's uh, for anybody that's uh, what you call it watching this, okay, and understanding it, it has half a brain. Even people that hate Trump, if you have a half a brain, uh, you should be able to realize this. Sorry. Uh, 
somebody didn't know I was live and started talking, but not a big deal. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, because of McCain, it didn't pass, it didn't get repealed. You're absolutely right. But what I'm saying is, is this, this is all political theater right now. Okay. Nancy Pelosi, by the way, is also holding up the articles of impeachment from going to the Senate. Right. And I hear again, people that need a civics book, uh, you know, she's allowed to do that. Or, you know, um, this could, this could destroy, this could destroy uh, the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Look, um, she, she cannot, she, she can hold them. Okay. Her reason for holding them though is saying, um, is saying that, uh, the reason that she's holding them is because of the fact that she doesn't believe that the Senate will hold a fair trial. And Donnie, I'll get to yours in just a second. Um, Sorry. Um, it's, it's actually very important. It's about the Virginia thing. <laughs> it's about the Virginia thing, but I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, okay. Okay. So she's holding him because she says that she doesn't believe that there's going to be a fair um, trial in the Senate. Well, here's the thing. Again, the House is the grand jury. They indicted him. Now it's up to the Senate to actually try him. Her job is done. Okay, and the House makes up their own rules, and that's fine. Uh, that's why she got away with changing all the rules that have historically been in place, because they are allowed to actually do it. But she doesn't get to tell the Senate what to do. The Senate makes up their own rules as to what to do when trying the case. That's specifically laid out in the Constitution, specifically. So what she's holding them up for is completely false, completely off the wall, and completely not in the Constitution. Um, not only that, from my understanding of the Constitution, the Senate can take up the articles of impeachment by themselves. They don't need her to actually transfer them or transport them or anything like that. It's the, the articles were presented, they were voted on, they were accepted. It is matter of record now. Donald J. Trump has been impeached. With that being said, the Senate now can take up the trial or not take up the trial anytime they want. That's just the way it works. So she can play all the political theater she wants. What's act in actuality, Mitch McConnell can bring it up anytime he wants. Donnie says, what do you think their next move is? I think we're seeing their next move. This is their next move. They're going to hold the articles of impeachment because that's the, that's the, that's the headline that they want, that Donald J. Trump was impeached. They don't want the headline that he was impeached in December of 2019 and then exonerated in January 2020. They don't want that. So they're going to hold on to him and he's just going to stay impeached and they're not going to send it up to the Senate. Again, I think Mitch McConnell has the constitutional authority to circumvent that. But the also the, the other part of the play, which I'm going to get to, is the UCM, uh, the USCMA which is the trade agreement between the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Uh, also, the omnibus bill. Uh, all of that stuff. That's all part of the play. It's all part of the plan. Um, Matthew says, I think that the Senate can throw it out if she doesn't get the impeachment to them in a certain time period. Yes, but they can't reverse the fact that the House actually impeached him. They can exonerate him or, or just acquit him um, you know, without a trial, I believe you're right. If it's not met in a certain time period. Now, some people I've heard say, you know, maybe she's holding it until after the election, given the fact that he's going to get reelected. She can't do that for the same reasons that I, uh, well, at least I don't think she can for the same reasons that I um, spoke about earlier. Once the new Congress is elected, all of the bills that have not been voted on by the Senate die. In other words, they just go down as bills. Now, I don't know if that exists with articles of impeachment or not, but I'm pretty sure that once the, 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 this session of Congress is over, she, does, she no longer has the, uh, the, the, the capability of sending the articles of impeachment up to the Senate. That's the only part, part that I'm really iffy on. I really don't know about that. But either way, it doesn't really matter because he'll be exonerated as soon as that happens because she can't think in any way, shape or form that 
she's actually going to get a majority in the Senate as far as Democrats go. It's just not going to happen. I'm telling you right now, what happened in Britain is a precursor to what's going to happen in 2020. In November 2020, conservatives are going to sweep the House, the Senate, and obviously keep the presidency. I'm telling you right now, mark my words, that's what's going to happen. Um, I also wanted to just touch on the Senate really quickly. Now, uh, and what's up, Amber? How you doing? I'm sorry I was so short with you in, in private messages. And you bring up a very good point, and I will definitely um, bring that up. I just, it was interrupting what I was doing, but I will bring it up. Um, in, in the Senate, okay, in the Senate, you have, uh, you know, obviously Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer going back and forth, okay? Now, Mitch McConnell actually laid out a really good case as to what happened in the House, as well as what the Senate should do, et cetera, et cetera. Chuck Schumer then stood up, and this is why this is why I agree with Brian to a T that many, many Americans need a civics book for Christmas because there are at least 40 percent. I'm going to go with at least 40 percent of Americans that are going to believe the lie that came out of Chuck Schumer's mouth today. Chuck Schumer took to the floor of the Senate and he turned around and said that it was a quote from the president saying, Article two gives me all the power I need. I can do whatever the hell I want. And re, he was referring that into a conversation about Ukraine, about this, about Congress, about whatever. The actuality of that comment, and I can't take credit for finding this out. It was actually Rush Limbaugh. I was listening to him today on the way to a drug test for a job. Um, it was it, it was Rush Limbaugh that found this, okay? I can't take credit for it. So I'm just telling you, I heard it and and I'm going to, I know it's true because I heard the, I heard the audio excerpt. Anyway, it was either June 16th or July 16th on an interview uh, with 2020. The president of the United States was speaking about special counsel Mueller. And the question was asked something about why didn't he fire him or something to that effect. And he turned around. Um, he turned around. What? Oh, no, I'm actually watching it live, uh, Matthew. It's actually me. Uh, I'll get to that in just a sec. But anyway, so um, he turned around and he answered the question by saying, Article 2 gives me the right to do whatever I want because of the fact that I'm the head of the executive branch. So I have the power to fire him. I just haven't. It had nothing to do with Congress. It had nothing to do with impeachment. It had nothing to do with subpoenas. It had to do with Robert Mueller. And whether or not he had the power to fire him, which, by the way, he was right. He did have the power to fire him. He could fire anybody he wants in the executive branch at will, whoever he wants, because they serve at the pleasure of the president because he is the leader of the executive branch. Period. OK, that is another thing that the left could not understand, apparently, was that. He can fire whoever the hell he wants in the executive branch for whatever reason he wants. So, like I said, um, he served or they serve at the pleasure of the president. Chuck Schumer literally stood on the Senate floor today and lied through his teeth, like bold faced lied. And 40 percent of America are going to believe it. Hell, there's probably 10% of Americans that woke up today wondering why the hell wasn't Donald Trump taken out of the White House in cuffs, not knowing anything about what happened. This is where we live right now. This is where we live. Now, I want to touch on a couple of things. First of all, like I said, he will be reelected, and I believe the conservatives are, are going to sweep the House and sweep the Senate. I really do. He needs to stop shooting himself in the foot, though. Like last night at the rally, he did a really good job, but he made one comment about that congresswoman's uh, husband, who is a war veteran. Should have never said he might be looking up instead of looking down just because he doesn't like the congresswoman. He needs to rise above that stupid shit. I understand fighting. I understand fighting for what you believe in. I understand, you know, being being kind of a bull in a china shop. I get all of that. I do. And I'm one of the few people who who no matter how much I dislike some of the things he does or or and we're going to get onto one of them that he's probably going to sign that I very much dislike. But um, no matter how much I might dislike some of his actions, like the bump stock ban, like the uh, the obvious rise to the red flag laws, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No matter how much I dis, 
dislike some things that he does. I definitely like the fact that he's a fighter. I definitely like the fact that he's not afraid to mix it up. But he's got to rise above those comments. Okay? Look, the man's dead. He's a war veteran. He's to be respected. Just leave it alone. Just because you hate his wife or don't like his wife doesn't mean that you should sit there and uh, make the assumption or, or the insinuation that he might be uh, looking up from you from from hell. OK, that's that's not good. OK, thank you, Matthew. Yes, uh, the U.S. the U.S. CM, CMA. That is exactly I'm going to get to what Matthew just said about the omnibus bill. But the U.S. CMA is uh, the trade agreement between Canada, United States and Mexico. OK. This is a very good thing. The reason why it got passed now or the reason why it got brought up to the House now is because of the fact that Nancy Pelosi needed another article before Christmas or another headline before Christmas other than impeachment, because she's very, very embarrassed about the fact that she impeached the president. I'm telling you right now, she knows she has signed the death knell for the Democrat Party in this. Just think about it. You had a presidential candidate for the Democrats turn around and vote present. OK. Which, by the way, out of all the Democrat pre uh, candidates, I'm telling you right now, Tulsi Gabbard is the most like down the middle candidate out there. And the press and the left are eating her up. They said that she's a Putin puppet, all kinds of shit. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. She checks all the boxes for the for the Democrats and they hate her. Just proves they talk a talk and they do something else. Uh, Holly Kustos, which, by the way, I think this is the first time I've seen you comment on the show. So welcome. Uh, he's he needs to do he needs to let other defend him and not stoop to the liberals level. Agreed. Agreed. I don't mind him fighting and getting in the mix and doing all that. But like I said, that comment and comments like that need to stop. He's, he should be better than that. Now, Matthew Peavy. I agree. He says the omnibus is completely BS. It absolutely is. If you haven't seen it yet, please go to the page that you're watching this on, the Unapologetic Patriot. Go there, um, click on the Ted Cruz video, and that will give you an idea of what's in this omnibus bill that already has passed the House and Senate and is most likely going to be signed by the president, and it's complete horse shit. Um, it still has... Uh, corporate loopholes for the lobbyists and for the corporations in it. It extends it for another seven years. I, I think Ted Cruz referred to it as corporate welfare. Um, it has that in there. It uh, only has $1 billion or $1.4 billion for the wall when President Trump asked for $8 billion. Um, it uh, does not defund Planned Parenthood. It does not do anything to, um, uh, to, to, to help with getting illegals out of here. It, uh, it, there's a, there's 10 different things that he lists and he honestly calls it a sack of, like a garbage. It's just, it belongs in an ashtray, 2,400 pages of absolute garbage in a $1.4 trillion spending bill. Think about that. I'm going to say it again. $1.4 trillion spending bill. Yeah. Tobacco raising age to 21. So again, just like Ted Cruz said, our boys in green are, are going to be able to take machine gun fire. They're going to be able to travel thousands of miles to a foreign soil to, to get shot at, possibly killed, maimed, whatever. And they won't even be able to enjoy a smoke if they want to. This is this is what we're coming to. Uh, the other thing was and, and even Ted Cruz said, you know, why not just leave that up to the states? The federal government doesn't have to be involved in that. Why not just leave that up to the states? Um, there's other stuff in there. And honestly, I watched the video right before I went live, so I didn't get all of it memorized. But go watch the video. OK, first of all, Ted Cruz is one of the most staunch uh, defenders of the Constitution. Excuse me, you'll ever see. So by all means, go watch him and learn more about him. Um, he's a very, very, very good, um, politician for lack of a, yeah, sure. He's a politician, but he's a very good politician. Um, if there is such a thing, uh, let's see. Oh, Democrats, um, lying or I'm sorry, cheering. Democrats were cheering. It's supposed to be a somber day. We hate doing this to the president of the United States, but we're doing it for America. That was Nancy Pelosi's narrative. We're doing constitutional work that has to be done. We don't want to do it, but we have to do it. And, and man, the articles of impeachment have been passed. And you hear all the Democrats, woo, 
uh, the, the, the Muslim from Detroit or whatever. She's over there making videos saying, I'm on my way to go impeach the president. All happy and shit. You know why Nancy Pelosi didn't want that to happen? Because it looks just as bad as it does. Because it makes the American people see that these people are just partisan hacks that are hate filled. They're not doing this for any other reason. The fact that they lost the 2016 election, they hate Donald Trump. They hate 63 million people. Talib, thank you. Uh, they hate 63 million people that voted for him. They hate it that Hillary Clinton did not win. That's why. Uh, Darcia uh, LJ Black Autry says, and I, again, I think this is the first time I've seen you comment. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, that's a lot of Big Macs. One trillion shaking my head. Yeah. Uh, she also says, um, and she gave them the look. Oh yeah. She definitely gave them the look. It was the, don't you dare, you know, mom look. And they finally shut up. But I mean, oh yeah, it was bad. It was bad. They all started cheering. It was bad. Um, I also want to touch on, I'm going to jump around just a little bit here. I also want to jump on, uh, I'm going to actually bring up what, um, Amber actually just showed me. Um, there is, first of all, there's a gun rally on uh, January 20th, a gun rally, a Second Amendment support rally in Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, uh, at the Capitol building um, to show your support for the Second Amendment, to sh send a clear message to all Virginia's government, all the governments across the country. We are not going to back down any longer on our Second Amendment, period, end of story. Do not bother. This is why we're doing it. Richmond, Virginia, Capitol Building, 8 a.m., January 20th, 2020. I can't tell you that I'm going to be there, but I'm going to try like hell. Um, now, what I got sent was there is a Virginia Center for Public Safety at 10 a.m. at the Bell Tower, a peaceful vigil to commemorate the lives of over 1,000 Virginians killed by gun violence each year. That's happening at the same time at the same capital. And it's meant to make all gun owners look bad. That's what it is. And you guys should be pissed off about it. You guys should bring as much attention as you possibly can about it. You guys should raise holy hell about it. And for, and we can get into the statistics if you like, because I guarantee you, just like countrywide, I guarantee you um, that that thousand people that supposedly are killed in Virginia every year by gun violence, just like nationally, 75%, if not more, are actually killed by suicide by gun. Okay? So homicide by gun is very, very low compared to suicide. If you take suicide out, um, we actually drop to one of the safest nations in the world as far as gun violence. Just wanted to put that out there. Um, Matthew says, and this WAPO CNN contributors, yes, they were celebrating um, uh, impeachments uh, on Twitter. They did delete it, but they were caught. Um, isn't that MLK Day? I'm not sure. Uh, Amber says, yup. Uh, yeah, Tammy, oh, Jesus, right. So anyway, listen, I've also been getting a lot of flack, and I'm probably going to again. Go to my YouTube channel, guys, if you want. It's the Unapologetic Patriot on YouTube. Um, if you haven't subscribed there, please do. It'll just help me out. Uh, drop a like on, on any video that you want. But anyway, more importantly, go back to the last video that I did about the, the Virginia rally and look at the comments that I got. I mean, here's the thing. On Facebook, I was getting lit up by some, shall we say, stand down brigade um, uh, key keyboard commandos. We're all used to them by now. Because of the fact that I'm a firebrand and a trouble starter and a shit stirrer. No, I'm a truth teller and a real patriot. That's what you can't stand and you never will. And then on YouTube, it was the opposite. I was getting hit for being too soft of a patriot. The only way we're going to win this is if we take down the government by force. We need to march and kill people. I mean, that's the sentiment that he was getting across. And it's, I mean, you could read the comments yourself. And... It's amazing to me, right? And it tells me again, just like it did the last time I was on air, it tells me again that I've got to be doing something right because I'm getting hit by the um, the, the the fake triots that are the keyboard commandos that all they want to do is yep, 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 yep. And, and that's about it. And then 
which by the way, Holly, you were, you were golden on that. And she actually got Virginia three up to change their stance and go from calling for nobody to come help, um, from out of state to asking for help, which was awesome. Okay. Um, so great job, Holly on that. And then on YouTube, I was getting hit in the opposite direction for being too soft of a Patriot because I say that there's really no reason to march on Washington yet. We need to show force without being violent, let the government make their move, and then we respond accordingly. That's what I was saying. Um, you know, or gang violence. Very good, Donnie. I didn't see that comment. Um, oh, okay. I didn't know that, Amber. Um making me think that the VCDL is expecting violence because they're planning to incite the violence. No, 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 Amber. They're not, they're not planning to incite it. No way. No way. They're planning to incite it. That's I'll, I'll, no, no, I don't get that impression at all. I don't get that impression at all. I think that they are expecting a peaceful, um, a peaceful rally that in the statement that I just put out from them, they're asking everybody to act accordingly, be very, you know, very, very polite, uh, don't bring long guns. They're not saying you can't. They're saying, please don't, because it's going to just make us look like, you know, this, that, and the other thing, um, you know, uh, you know, as far as, uh, extremists and all that, look, I say the same thing. Please don't bring your long guns. Uh, yeah, it's a lobby day. It's not their, their protest day. That's what exactly what they said, Tammy. Um, so with that said, January 20th, 2020, Richmond, Virginia, as many gun owners as possibly can show up there. Me personally, I'd wear, um, I'd wear plain clothes. If you have a concealed carry permit from a state that is a reciprocal with Virginia, then by all means, um, carry a pistol. All right. Um, uh, Amber, honestly, I don't, I don't think that they actually care about that, that other rally that's going on. I think that they need to do what they have to do, um, you know, uh, and, and this was the best day for them to do it. I don't know. But Matthew says, I have to, I had to slow someone down last night. They were all about March on Congress before the Senate even votes. Right. And, and you know what? Listen, if the Senate votes to remove Donald Trump from office, it was done legally. So what are you going to do? And then they get Mike Pence. We get Mike Pence. Again, this kind of leads me down the other path of I'm so sick and tired of people worshiping one man. That man swore an oath to the Constitution. This is still part of the constitutional process of the United States. Whether we agree with it or not, the House does have a right to impeach for any reason they seem fit. Andrew Johnson even said that he feared that a majority in the House would just use it as a political weapon against the oppose or the minority party. Well, guess what? It took 240 some odd years, but it actually happened yesterday. But it's still within their constitutional right to do so. And then the Senate would vote on it and try him, try him in a trial. And then based on that, the Supreme Court justice, the, the chief justice, as well as the Senate would vote and the, the, the Supreme Court justice would, would um, um, preside over it. And with all of that said, it would follow the constitutional uh, norms that are laid out. And if by some holy shit miracle he got removed from office, it would still be constitutional. That's not a reason to march on Washington. There's been plenty of reasons to march on Washington. The 1934 uh, Gun Control Act, the 1968 Gun Control Act, the uh, assault weapons ban, the bump stock ban. These are all reasons to sit there and do something, not march on them with violence, but march on them. Um, he's not going to get removed from office. I'm just telling you that right now. Uh, how you doing, Chris? I know you're in bed, baby. I hope you're feeling better. I'll be in in a few minutes. Uh, Darcia says uh, the other event is permitted and on the books. The VCDL isn't. Why plan these two events on the same day? Just seems risky to say the least. Without risk, there is no reward. I don't know what to tell you, but I'm not going to stop backing this VCDL uh, event because of the fact that they're not permitted or on the books. Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe Richmond is pulling exactly what Charlottesville did and not not issuing a permit. I don't know. 
Okay, or worse than that, Charlottesville issued a permit and then revoked the permit, which is against their First Amendment right, but or against the promoter's First Amendment right. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, what was that? Well, I can say to you that every time we have a rally in PA, they storm the Capitol and go to reps. The bonus, ar the, the bonus army marched on D.C. and Patton and Eisenhower brought the military against our vets. Whew. Yeah, I didn't know about that. See, I, I told you guys, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, a huge historian. I know enough. I know more than most people, but I didn't know that. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm not going to stop my support for v VCDL. Um, I believe it's a really good uh, cause. It needs to happen over... 80% of the counties in Virginia are now taking a stand and they, and they have labeled themselves Second Amendment sanctuaries, which anybody who actually knows what the Second Amendment means, the entire country is a Second Amendment sanctuary. But I understand what they're doing because they have to fight back in Democrat terms because Republicans are weak. Conservatives are weak. We always bow down. We always let them win. We shouldn't, but we do. Grow a spine, people. Learn about your... Oh, oh, that was another thing. Gorsuch. Gorsuch had a beautiful quote in his new book. Uh, I don't know if it's actually in the book. Um, yes, Charlottesville was a setup. You're absolutely right. Um, I don't know if it, it's in his book, but he said it to Ainsley Earhart during the interview about his book. Uh, I forgot who it was. I think it was Andrew Jackson, but I'm not sure. Said that we have quite, pos quite possibly the most perfect form of government that's ever existed. It took over 500 years of people, you know, uh, whittling it down to get to where we, we are, where we were founded. But it requires an informed and involved populace to keep it. Right now, generally speaking, we are not informed nor involved. So we will lose this country if we do not get informed and involved. It's just that simple. Guys, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And if I don't see you, I should see you in between Christmas and New Year, but I'm not sure because the 27th I'm, I'm due to... Um, see my new baby, my new baby girl. So if I don't see you, I want to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. God bless each and every single one of you. I hope next year is better than this year, and I hope you get everything you want for Christmas. Love you guys. God bless every single one of you. Please, please get informed and get involved. We love you. God bless. Take it easy.